Do you want to know how to assist feed your snake if it's not eating? Stick around in this video and I'm going to show you how to do it. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. Okay, so just a little history into my issue. I had four Doomerals Boa babies that are three months old. After three months, only one of the babies has eaten. I've heard that Dumeril's boas are notorious for not eating for two to three months, but now it's getting to the point where I really need to start feeding them so they can grow and I can sell the babies that I don't want to keep. So the three babies that have not eaten, I began assist feeding. Today I'm going to show you how and what process I use to assist feed the babies. So this is a three month old Dumeril's boa. And amazingly, after three months, these guys are still doing great. Like, I feel like this guy could still go on for another three months without eating. But, like I said, I want to sell them and I can't sell them without getting a meal in them. And so, I really needed to start assist feeding these guys. Plus, I just had to learn how to do it on my own anyway. Now, Dumeril's Boas, it's actually so easy on because they have the calmest and nicest demeanor. You're gonna see in this video, I promise you I'm not hurting the animal, but I am holding it around the head and the neck area. And no matter how many times I do it to this animal, it never strikes, it never gets aggressive. You sort of have to keep their throat area here long. So if you have two people, one to hold the back and one to hold the head, that's going to help. Otherwise, they're gonna use their muscles to scrunch, 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 and they're probably gonna get out of your hand. The other thing you'll need is something kind of small and blunt so that you can force the food down the snake's mouth if the snake does not take it. Some snakes, as soon as you put the food in their mouth and then place them back in their container, they will proceed with eating the food item. But what I had to do with these three, they kept spitting out the food no matter how much I pushed it in with my finger, they kept spitting it out, spitting it out, spitting it out. So I had to use a tool like this to push it a little bit deeper than my finger could comfortably get. And then that was the trick. So let me show you now. If you're doing it by yourself, let the snake wrap one of your hands right here, the pushing hand with its tail, and you hold the head straight, the neck as straight as you can. So when we push that rodent down, there's no curves in the snake's spine hindering the rodent going down. So I have a dethawed uh, pinky, I think this is a rat or pinky mouse. Make sure you choose a food item that is, watch, I'm gonna let him go here to regroup. And as you can see, he's not being aggressive because I needed to get a better grip on him. Here we go. Again, a little pull away, but not aggressive. And right behind the neck, I'm gonna grab my little tweezer thing here. So I have everything in one hand right now, stretching his body out with my right hand, holding his body straight, his neck straight with my left hand. Snakes are pretty easy. Unlike lizards, which lock their jaws, for some reason, snakes tend to open their mouth when you push on it. And I might need to hold a little bit higher on the snake's body like that with my right hand so that he can't wrap as much and we are going to just begin the process of getting this in. If the snake does not open their mouth very easily, you could use a credit card or something and just kind of lightly start pushing up against it and nine times out of 10, you'll get them to open it up. But it's been very easy for me so far with the babies to just kind of push the pinky's face into their mouth. Another thing, you will want to use a food item that is smaller than what you would normally feed by far. I mean, this food item, as you can see, is so much smaller than the body width of this animal because I just really want to make it easy to get that food down. And he's really pushing on me here, so I'm going to position my right hand even higher so that he can't get as much. And I actually let him go so that I can kind of get in position. But what happens when you let them go, I'll show you here in a second, they start wrapping their body around your hand and then sometimes their body gets in their mouth. So there we go, now I got the face in the back of the throat of the animal. Now don't worry, snakes can breathe, they have this little thing in their mouth that allows them to move past the food item and, and get air. But he's trying to scrunch his neck in an angled way 
to try to get the food item out. He's trying to regurgitate it. So what you need to do is try to hold his neck straight. See, see his, his neck right here is moving. And just apply gentle pressure with the probe that you're using or whatever you're using. Gentle pressure, guys. They're gonna be pulling pretty strong on you and you don't want them to break their throat or their neck. You have plenty of opportunities to go with this. I am barely, I'm not, I'm barely, he's, he's got a, a good position now and I don't want him to hurt himself. So I am kind of just being careful. There we go. I let his body go so he can straighten himself out a little. Play it by ear. If you feel like they are breaking their bones or their neck, then just let go and, and reposition. It's just something you gotta do. But check it out, here we go. Now at this point, good snakes will continue to eat it and you can put them back in their cage. These snakes, I have to actually push it down further. And now what's gonna help, because he's using this to get leverage and push that mouse up and also make me feel like um, he's pulling his own head off. Now I will hold this so he gets less leverage and now he has less strength to fight against the food going down. And again, I can see his exposed windpipe here. He's not taking a breath right now, but the windpipe is exposed right here and he can breathe perfectly fine. This is how they consume normal meals. If you poke too hard, you're gonna poke through the pinky and into his, his throat. So to do that, make sure you're using a blunt tip and just gently keep pushing. One side of the rodent, another side of the rodent, the middle of the rodent, the back of the rodent. Just keep gently pushing, pushing, pushing and eventually the snake's muscles are going to catch that rodent and he's going to start swallowing it. Now their throat is resilient, right? So even if you poke it a little, it's not gonna hurt, but I only try to poke just the rodent. At this point, I think he would regurgitate it. And actually with the last snake, I got it at this point and then he pulled out of my hand and he started to regurgitate the rodent, but then finished it in a good snake manner. But I wanna show you guys how deep I, I went with the assist feeding the first time I fed these guys so that you know how deep to go. Is that deep enough? The butt is sticking out. You would think, but no. The snake can very easily regurgitate that as soon as you pull your grip away. So again, try to keep his neck area straight that will allow the rodent to go down. And once you get to this point, you might want to start easing off on, ah, there it is. As I, as I loosen my hand a little bit, I can actually feel his muscles starting to pull that rodent down. But because I don't want him to go through this experience again, I'm just going to keep pushing that rodent lightly. I'm barely pushing the rodent now. A lot of the rodent going down is his muscles beginning to take it down. He's still trying to fight a little bit, so I definitely don't want to let it go yet. I'm gonna get the pinky all the way in until only the tail is showing. See, he put he, he, his tail is thrashing and sometimes that winds up getting in the way and getting in their mouth. Okay, you can see how far that pinky is, but he's still trying to kind of regurgitate it up a little bit. So you want to hold their body straight and that's when their muscles really start to do their thing. And I'm really losing my grip here. So I'm gonna have to let go and just see what the snake does. But as you let go, try to close the mouth a little bit. And as you close the mouth, Watch, see, he looked like he was gonna throw it up for a second, but he's not going to. I can tell right now he's gonna keep taking it down. There we go, jaw muscles crunching, and he's, his body is going to start pushing this rodent down. And what I like to do at this point, just let him chill, okay? Don't, don't shake up his world like that. Don't make them jerk around much. Put him back in his cage and just let him chill don't do anything too crazy because they could still regurgitate that meal. Because I was holding them, I just allowed myself to continue holding them, but let me show you. So this is what I've been doing for all the snakes. Once I'm confident that they're not gonna regurgitate that meal, I put them back in their tub and I just let them chill. I don't shove it back into the rack system here because when you shove it back into the rack system, it jolts their world and it might make them react and vomit. But I can see he's actually in motion of pushing that rodent down. And that is very good news. I'm confident now that if I wanted to push this back into its tub space, I absolutely could very gently, but I wanna show you guys what he's doing and the success of it. 
So sometimes snakes just need a little encouragement and you can see his body knows what needs to be done. It's his brain that stops him from eating. But the body is instinctual to know what it's doing. Just like a sneeze, right? When your nose gets too much dust in it, you sneeze to protect your lungs. This snake's body knows what needs to happen. And look how far it is actually. So I'll show you, it's all the way down. And I'm going to just now still gently put him back. Nothing too crazy. I don't want to jar his world. I don't want to make a lot of noise. See, he kind of flinched a little, but it's to the point right now where I am 99% sure he's keeping this thing down. But just in case, you just want to be as careful as possible. I push his home back in and boom, perfect. Assist feeding successful. Now let's look at the two other snakes that I assist fed before this video and let's see how they're doing. All right, so this was the first snake that I assist fed about five, to 10 minutes ago. And all you want to do here is just make sure that there's no regurgitation. So we're going to look in the tub, make sure no regurgitation. I will look under the bowl, make sure no regurgitation. I'll kind of look around in the substrate a little bit and I can tell no regurgitation. Perfect. Let's put this snake back. And after about 10 minutes or so, it's pretty apparent to me that this snake now has a meal in its belly to stay. This was the other snake that got fed also about five to 10 minutes ago. They were fed back to back. You can see they like hiding under their water bowls, but we're gonna lift that water bowl, make sure no regurgitations and no regurgitations. I can see a little bit more lumpiness towards the back and you can see not aggressive guys, look. Touch his face, not aggressive. Despite all of that holding, um, he's not showing aggressive signs. Doomerel's boas are amazing guys. And so these guys are gonna be for sale now that they're assist feeding and you know how to assist feed if they decide not to eat. But again, Doomerel's boas, common to go two to three months without eating their first meal. I'm confident these guys could have gone another three or four months without a meal. They're just that stocky and well built right out of the egg sack. What is up guys? I hope you learned something or gained something from this video. I really wanted to shoot an assist feeding video because I'm newer at it, but it needs to be done for certain animals. I hope that you can find this knowledge valuable for your herpetological collection and career at some point. And again, just for hygiene sake, this is a probe. So anytime I use this probe on one animal or one species, I make sure to wash it with Dawn dish soap or sometimes alcohol or vinegar, just to make sure that this probe is clean for the next use. So thank you guys so much for joining me in this short little video. I hope you guys are doing well. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, have a geeky gecko great day.